Professor Brasch, you've been awarded the honorary membership of the Austrian Society of Radiology here at Hamburg. What made you enter the field? I think it was a matter of good luck, but I remember the day specifically that I decided to be a radiologist. I was a medical student on the medical clerkship, and I had a new patient who was, oh, 200 kilos and was obtunded and couldn't communicate, but I wanted to listen to her chest in the morning before I presented her to the professor. So I, I pulled her up in the bed, but I couldn't listen without taking one hand to, to put the stethoscope on her back. And in the other hand, I had to reach around her to hold her up so she wouldn't fall down in the bed. So I'm, I'm like this listening to her chest when I felt some uh, saliva fall down on my head. Uh, and I decided later that day that I didn't want to go into medicine, that I wanted to be a radiologist. Uh, because the fellows who were doing radiology seemed to be having so much fun. It was so enjoyable, and they were so excited about that field. And uh, I've never regretted that decision. So after this initial event, what made you continue in the field? Well, the same reasons. It was fun, very interesting. Uh, to be a radiologist is, is not so much appreciated by people outside of radiology, but it's very important. We, I think we consider ourselves uh, doctors for doctors. In other words, uh, that we help patients, uh, the way we do that is to assist their primary care physicians to, to find out the proper diagnosis and to evaluate the disease and then to help them make critical decisions. So uh, that's great fun and, uh, and very satisfying. So I'm happy to, be, to have been a radiologist. I'm retired now, but it, it's been a good field. So what has been the focus of your work? Like, which subspecialty? Uh, clinically, I'm a pediatric radiologist. So I read studies in children, which, which uh, enhances the enjoyment for me of being a radiologist. And, but I've also greatly enjoyed being a researcher something that surprised me. I didn't consider myself when growing up to be much of a scientist or a researcher. But uh, when I actually began to do it, I found that it was uh, fascinating and, and uh, very satisfying and took me in new directions where I, I met wonderful people from around the world who were interested in my research and I was interested in theirs. And uh, I worked at UCSF in San Francisco, which was for years a, uh, a hub where people came from around the world to, to share information and to learn. Many of the people who are honored here today uh, with me uh, had spent some of their early time in San Francisco and, and it was just a, a special time. And, uh, and I was lucky enough to be part of that, so I, I love research and I loved working with young people and teaching them uh, the joys of, of really being an academic radiologist. What do you consider to be the major achievement? For me? Well, that's hard to say. Um, I, again, staying with the focus of my being lucky, uh, I was lucky enough to be at one of the first places in the world to have MRI. And I had already, at that time, been interested in contrast media. So being an opportunist, I saw the chance to apply contrast media to M what was then called NMR and now called MRI. Uh, they took out the word nuclear because that scared people. So it became magnetic resonance imaging with no nuclear. and. Uh, I think I did some of the first, if not the first, contrast-enhanced imaging of NMR images and uh, got to just open up that field, which has been uh, fun for the next 25 or 30 years. So, so I guess my, 
major achievement besides training fine young people and working with them uh, is to help in the development of contrast enhanced imaging for MRI. But there's some other things too that I'm proud of, but no need to mention those. What do you consider the key challenge in the discipline currently? That's a good question. I, I think there are many possible answers to that, but the one that I would be most excited about and I think would bring the greatest benefit to, to, the, to the world, to our patients and to, and to radiology, would be to work new techniques out whereby we could not so well just locate and identify and size disease uh, like cancer, but we need to do a better job of individually characterizing each person's disease so that we can say this tumor has this biology, that tumor, even though it may still be the same kind of tumor, breast cancer, let's say, breast cancers are not all the same. And what we really need to do in the future, and which would greatly expand diagnostic imaging and radiology, would be to tell our patients and our doctor colleagues um, how, what was the biology of this tumor? And how did this tumor respond to that treatment? And, and how quickly did it respond? Uh, right now, we, the paradigm is that we do imaging maybe uh, six or eight weeks after we start chemotherapy. Well, that's a terribly long time to wait to see if something's working. And, uh, and then we're not very quantitative about it. All we do is say, did it shrink or did it grow? And that's not really very sensitive. So I think we need quantitative, uh, very early on detective and detection methods to see how a disease is doing and how is it doing in that patient with that treatment, uh, you know, maybe within hours of, of giving the, the treatment. And that's what I'm going to talk about in my lecture today uh, because I think I know a way to do it. Uh, in fact, I know I know a way to do it, but the only thing that's missing is I can do it in rats with tumors, human tumors, but I can't do it in people. And the reason I can't do it in people is we do not have government approval for the new kinds of contrast media that I think we so drastically need. I think these would open up a whole new realm for us if we could evaluate the, the biology and the response of diseases to treatment quickly, almost immediately, and tell, and tell the difference between Mrs. Smith's breast cancer and Mrs. Jones's. So uh, I think that's someplace we want to go in the years ahead. What would be your message to the Austrian society? Thank you. Um, thank you for thinking of me and for including me as someone worthy of mention with the uh, many other distinguished and more accomplished people who today got, got honored here. So and I, I'm delighted to be here and, and I thank my friends and colleagues in the Austrian Radiological Society. Thank you.